Greetings and welcome and welcome to M Talk News, bringing you information of the Christian world. I'm your national news anchor Dustin Pfeiffer, and for our first story tonight, another pastor from Hillsong has resigned. Darnell Baird, who is the pastor, or who was the pastor and creative director for the Montclair, New Jersey Hillsong campus, resigned on Tuesday, April 27th. This resignation came after Mr. Barrett's sharing of photos he had taken while being shirtless and in Nike leggings at a gym. He shared this picture with his close friends list on Instagram. However, he included a 30-year-old woman who once volunteered for him at the New Jersey campus. He did quickly reach out to her after he sent the photo, stating that it was a mistake sending it to her and that she was accidentally added to his close friends list on Instagram. The woman shrugged it off initially and later blocked him on Instagram. However, she did eventually unblock him, sending him a very strong response to what he was doing, condemning his actions. She claimed that he was making advances towards her for an online sexual relationship. Barrett did deny those allegations and the so-called phishing scheme, but was in, was in understanding on why she would think that after the many scandals at Hillsong has been out, that have been ousted. Barrett decided to resign from Hillsong Montclair location, citing infidelity as the reason for his resignation and that him and his wife are working through it. Hillsong has since confirmed this resignation on Tuesday, expressing their disappointment at his actions. Now on to our next story. Hope United Methodist Church, located in Bloomington, Illinois, decided to host a Drag Sunday. This service was featured on April 15th uh, Religion News Services article which spotlighted a 23 year old Isaac Simmons who is who is the church's director of operation dressed in drag going by the name of Miss Pentecost. The service was hosted on April 11th which included quote unquote drag artists who, who sang, prayed, and performed during the service. Mr. Simmons was recently certified, was a, recently became a certified candidate for ministry by the Illinois Great Rivers Conference Vermilion River District Committee. He would be the first dry queen certified by the United Methodist Church. Moeller, who is the president of the Baptist Theological Seminary located in Louisville, Kentucky, called this an affront to their faith, citing that this goes against the core teachings of Christianity. Moeller, while speaking on his podcast, The Briefing, had called this a direct violation of the clear teachings of Scripture concerning the fact that those who God has made as men should identify as men, and those who God has made as women should identify as women. He also added that this is, that this is found parallel scriptural teaching by the, way, by the way in both the Old and New Testaments. I do apologize. Mueller has re referred to this as an open revolt against God. There is a war in a church between liberal ideals and conservative ideals. Mueller stated that this is just beginning and that um, once conservatives have been ousted and removed from the United Methodist Church, that the future will be unimaginable, unimaginable but not for too long. I do apologize. I am stumbling over my words. And for our next story, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops is preparing to deliberate over whether to allow Catholic politicians who are pro-choice to take communion. Archbishop Joseph Newman of the Archdiocese of Kansas City, who leads the Committee on Pro-Life Activities within the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, had this to say. Because President Biden is Catholic, it presents a unique problem for us. It can create confusion. How can he say he's a devout Catholic and he's doing these things that are contrary to church teach, church's teaching? According to the USCCB's website, the body usually meets twice a year to discuss issues of doctrinal matters and business. If approval, this gives permission for the bishops to deny communion on that basis. The bishops of Wilmington, Delaware, and the Cardinal of Washington, D.C. asserted that Bible, I sorry, Bible, Biden is permitted communion at any of the churches that they ever see. Now on to our next story. Harvest Bible Chapel, which is a mega church network with a couple of campuses, has recently confirmed Dr. Jeff Buckham as the new lead teaching pastor. 
Buckham has expressed extreme excitement to be a part of the Harvest Bible Chapel, stating that this is exactly what he has been looking for, and this will allow him to train leaders and plant churches. Harvest Bible Chapel has been doing this for a very long time. Buckham was unanimously confirmed by the church elders. This is a major sigh of relief after the bad press that they received when they found that McDonald, the church's former lead pastor, was misusing church funds and that his actions were contrary to the church, such as bullying and sexual misconduct. This information came to light after Harvest Bible Chapters Chapel's elders held a lengthy investigation into this matter. After this, more things came to light, and McDonald was investigated for reportedly hiring a hitman and was allegedly recording plans to plant child pornography in the office of Christianity Today's CEO. McDonald has since been fired, and the church is distancing themselves from McDonald and his actions, making it clear that McDonald's actions do not speak for their church. Up next, Idaho has become the first state to prevent the teaching of critical race theory in public schools as part of a recently passed Bill 377. This bill prevents the teachings of any sex, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin is inherently superior or inferior. It also bars teachings, t teaching that the individuals by virtue of race, sex, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin are inherently responsible for the actions committed in the past by other members of the same race, sex, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin. Idaho lawmakers say that this is a fundamental part of the critical race theory, also stating that this could further exacerbate and inflame divisions on the basis of sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, national origin, or other criteria in ways contrary to the unity of the nation and well-being of the state of Idaho and its citizens. This bill passage did not go without criticism. The president of the Idaho Education Association, Lane McKinley, McKinley made a statement to CNN. The passage of HB 377 and accompanying insinuations about Idaho teachers are very disappointing. This is a monster under the bed problem brought about by a false and misleading narrative that some legislators have willfully conflated. They aim to diminish the public's trust in our teachers and schools just to come back next year and push to privatize education. And for our last story tonight, the number one pick in the NFL draft this year, Trevor Lawrence, who was drafted by the Carolina Panthers, has been said to have grounded himself in Christian faith. Clemson head coach uh, Swenny uh, had this to say to Sports Spectrum. First off, I do apologize. I know I mispronounced that name. The good Lord was in a good mood when he made him. He must have had football on his mind that day because, man, you look up the epitome of quarterback, he's just a, pos a poster child in every area. Coach Swiney continues by what but what I love about him more than anything is he, he's faith driven he has built his life on a foundation of faith he has a great mom and dad great people around him but he's strong in his faith he is an inside out kid in this world of outside in you know people are paralyzed by other people's opinions and what some people say on social media and all this stuff he is not affected by that Trevor Lawrence is said to meet, meet every mark of a great quarterback, showing humility, strength, speed, and more importantly, being a team player. When Swiney was asked about what he would tell the, his players that, that were drafted, he had this to say, Don't ever let the light on you become brighter than the light in you. Be who you are. Be who God created you to be. The Jaguars will begin their season in September of 2021. Now we are going to go over to John with our international report. All right. Well, thank you, Dustin, for those reports. We'll be sure to follow those up with prayer. And now we are heading over to do your international reports for the week. So we're starting in Pakistan, where two Christians, Harun Ayub Masi and Salamat Mansha Masi, I do apologize if I mispronounced your names, were studying the Bible in a public park. Now, while they were doing this... They met a Muslim named Harun Ahmad and several of his friends. They gave him a Christian book called Water of Life. And while they were attempting to have a discussion concerning the divinity of Jesus Christ, an argument ensued. 
Ahmad accused the Christians of making derogatory remarks regarding Islam. They were arrested and charged with blasphemy. If convicted, they could face death. Salamat was immediately arrested and illegally kept in police custody for two months. This happened back in February and it just now is coming before a judge. He was mentally and physically tortured to give a confession to give a confession for the baseless accusations, his attorney reported. He was forced to admit to blasphemy and to name other members of his Bible study circle. Harun fled the city after securing bail. Now, a reminder, the laws in Pakistan have been very problematic. False accusations have led to mob lynchings, and many have needlessly died because of them. The blasphemy laws that were instated make it a criminal act to even criticize or question Islam, and have led to many people dying in religious minorities. Now we're going over to Nigeria, where Boko Haram, the terrorist group, have taken a town in Nigeria's Niger pro a uh, state called Kor. I do hope I'm not mispronouncing anything. The governor confirmed this, stating that Boko Haram have raised their flag. The governor also reported that many women were forcibly made the wives of the insurgents. As of yet, no military deployment has been sent to take back the town. As a reminder, Boko Haram has been causing many problems recently. They have mobilized into aggression, attacking Christians, and non-Muslims, as well as other Muslims who do not share their view on Islam. They are a militant group dedicated to bringing about Sharia law in Nigeria and spreading it throughout the world. And despite the claims by the Nigerian government that they have been defeated, they continue to cause problems. All right, now we're going over to Algeria, where if you remember Pastor Rakid Sagir and now Hamami, whom you may remember have had their court appeal delayed. For those who are new, they were convicted in absentia back in February for proselytizing. Their appeal was supposed to be heard on April 18th, but has now been pushed back to May 16th. If they are, if the sentence is upheld, they will spend the next two years in prison, as well as a heavy fine. Continue to pray for them all, and if you remember Hamid Saudad, he was recently convicted and sentenced to five years in prison for blasphemy. Two more Algerian Christians will face similar charges. We'll continue to follow as more comes to light. And we're ending off in India. So we're going back to more reports of violence. On April 22nd, Pastor Ram Nawas, his wife Pinky, and a congregant were praying while they were, and suddenly were attacked and beaten in their home. Pastor Nawa's four brothers and another man broke into the home with a hammer. The radical Hindus attacked them and beat them with sticks for praying. Pastor Nawas had a fractured shoulder, Pinky a severe header injury, and the congregant, whose name is not listed, also sustained severe injuries. Pastor Nawas has been threatened for some time because of his work in converting Hindus. The radicals which his, which his attackers were a part of a radical Hindu movement, the radicals use the anti-conversion laws as justification for their violence. Many states in India have expressed passing similar anti-conversion laws, which will only make the situation of attacks more frequent as well as more legal. Very little is done to defend these Christians who are attacked, and we see this as a huge problem that we pray will continue to... Uh, we pray that you will continue to follow it and to continue to pray for it. We will continue to keep you updated as the situation unfolds. And as a reminder, we would like to remind you, please continue to pray for every story we've reported on. Pray for the victims as well as the attackers, that the love of God and the light of Christ will illumine their li illuminate their lives and convert them from their ways. And with that, we will now go to your top stories for the week. Hey, guys. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, welcome to our Hot Topic segment. And today we've got some very interesting stories that we are going to be discussing with you. First, we're going to take a quick trip over to London, England. One of everybody's, I know everyone loves the city. It's very beautiful. Uh, for me, I love it because the Salvation Army's international headquarters is there. So I get a chance to meet the general and you know, meet with true evan well, meet with evangelists. However, that's not the topic of today's discussion or first discussion. John, why don't you bring him in a little bit? 
Today's topic in London is that a 71-year-old pastor was arrested for preaching. And, and you guys may start laughing about this, but yes, this is actually very true. John Sherwood, who was 71 years old, was arrested for preaching. Uh, he was arrested on uh, April 23rd in the center of Uxbridge, London, under the Public Order Act for making allegedly homophobic comments. So these homophobic comments are referring to his sermon on Genesis 1 about the biblical marriage. Well, not only that, but the biblical creation, you know, God creating the male and female. And apparently this was seen as offensive and it was enough for him to be arrested and mistreated while it was happening. Uh, he does report that he suffered several injuries. And it was, yeah. This is, uh, I would like to remind everybody, this is a 71-year-old man who was doing nothing but preaching and who was ridiculed and arrested. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, he was released. Mm -hmm. And the defense team for him was very unhappy pointing out how people may not like what someone has to say, but we have freedom of speech for a reason. And pointing out how if there had been a pride parade, for instance, no matter how many Christians didn't like it, the police would have protected it. But because one preacher makes a comment and preaches from the Bible, he's seen as homophobic and he's instantly shut down. So many people are pointing out the discrepancy between these two and how one is protected and the other is oppressed. Now, please note, some of you are going to say, oh, there's a separation of church and state. That exists here in the United States, although not practiced very well. Um, however, I am not familiar with um, English law, so I don't know if they have the same thing. I do believe that religion is a protected right in England. However, I cannot make that a 100% guarantee that it is. Well, even, even you know, the separation of church and state really has nothing to do with this. Like, he wasn't, he wasn't a state-sponsored preacher or anything. He was preaching in a public forum. Okay. And no, 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 I'm saying more about the protection of religion. Oh, yeah, well, it is protected over there. Huh? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is protected over there. And, you know, that's what he was doing. He was exercising his freedom of speech to speak, you know, right. his beliefs. And he is well entitled to do so. And it's honestly a ridiculous situation that should never have happened. But unfortunately, in the near future, I, we're we're going to see a lot more of this pie, even more closer to home here in the United States. In fact, you know, we already still see some of this. Uh, we still see, yeah. see things like this happen. And, you know, there's another incident that's related. It's on that radar, but it does not, it's not related to the church, moreover, a California law. And so we're going to go travel, crack across the Atlantic Ocean over to California real quick. Uh, we're not going to be there that long. Um, but a, New act, which was signed by uh, sitting Governor Gavin Newsom, uh, the Transgender Respect Agency and Dignity Act. And th what this will allow is for prisoners to who ha identify as the opposite sex to transfer to a prison that they are identified gender, their identified gender is. So if there is a male, they will go to a female prison. If they're a female, who identifies as a male, they'll go to a male prison. Well, 200 men have suddenly um, came up with a case of, what is that called? Um, gender dysphoria. Gender, gender suddenly came up with a case of gender dysphoria and was transferred, 200 were transferred to a female prison. And uh, yeah, as of April 6th, not a single request has been denied. Yes, and the problem is, and many people have pointed this out, these are individuals who have already made it clear that they do not respect the law. You know, they are in prison. And the concern is for the female prisoners who now have, you know, biological males living in the same quarters as them who don't need to really prove anything. They can 
just say that they identify as a female and they'll be transferred. And the concern is for the safety and well-being of the female prisoners because this is seen by many as cruel and unusual punishment to put them in a situation where they could potentially be assaulted. Raped. And yes. This is ridiculous. Um, this is a very ridiculous situation. And we, you know, and I, I'm all in favor. Well, no, I'm all in favor of prisoner rehabilitation. But with, with something like this, those prisoners are never going to get out of prison. They're not going to ever get out because they're going to be charged with assault, with rape. They're, they're going to they're going to be kept in prison longer and continuing this stuff because the law allows them to stay in the prison that, that, of the gender they, they are identifying as. So this is going to be a recurring thing. You know, this is not going to help, you know, prisoner rehabilitation. This is just going to worsen it. Exactly. And the con- and like I said, the real concern is that these women are exposed to cruel and unusual punishment, which our Constitution forbids. And many Christians are speaking up and saying, you know, this is not this is not OK. This is not OK to put biological males into a women's prison to expose them to it, because. <laughs> yeah, what what what's going to happen? And I've, I I. We're not saying that anyone who identifies as the opposite, you know, is instantly doing it to get in and rape people. We're not saying that. Do not think we are saying that. But we are saying that people are going to do it. You're going to have at least one or two, a part of that 200, who will do it. Yes, Um, because, again, as far as I know, they don't have to prove anything. All they have to do is say, I identify as a woman, and they can be placed in this prison. And there's already many problems with attacks and everything that go on in prison. And so all this is going to do is escalate the situation. This is an extremely ridiculous situation. Be in prayer as always. Be in prayer over these situations that God puts a hedge of protection around these women, regardless of what they have done in the past to be put in prison. Um, and for the men, too, you know, that, that God reveals in their heart that this is the wrong thing to do. This is, this yeah. is an abuse. and. Honestly, again, pray over the situation. Yes, you're going to see pray. you're going to see a lot more attacks, not just from, you know, you know. Let me say this: even like I said, one or two may you know, out of that two hundred may abuse that. Well, as far as I know, that women are not defenseless, and they will figure out who committed the assault and, and fight back. And fight back. And yes. this is going to turn into a very violent and it's going to escalate very quickly. And the only thing we can do is, or what, one thing we could do as Christians is pray over the situation and petition the government to re, re, redact this order or redact this bill. Yes. To, you know, as Christians, we have an, a moral obligation to speak out on these matters. And that's what we're doing here. And, you know, again, going back to London, of course, this is stuff that have, unfortunately is becoming very common, it seems like these days. You know, how many Christians these days are attacked for their beliefs on these matters? These situations, again, be in prayer over these situations. Uh, that God comes in and intervenes on the behalf of those who will serve him. And to yes. protect those who are innocent in the matter. And that God opens the hearts of those who are committing wicked actions and who are committing themselves to evil. And that God, that the Holy Spirit provokes their heart into doing the right thing. That they turn their lives around and they they reject sin, they reject these evil desires, and they turn to become a force for good. Yes. And with that, we would like you to stay tuned for our media report. Thank you, Dustin. And now I will do the media report for the week. I will be listing off the top 10 Christian songs for this week. And at number 10, we have Shall Not Want featuring Chandler Moore by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. At number nine, we have Battle Belongs by Phil Wickham. At number eight, we have Good God Almighty by Crowder. At number seven, we have My Psalm by Tyree Miller. 
And number six, we have Old Church Basement featuring Dante Brown by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. At number five, we have Mercy featuring Chris Brown by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. At number four, we have Hold On To Me by Lauren Daigle. At three, we have Talking To Jesus featuring Brandon Lake by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. At number two, we have J Jaira, I think it's pronounced. By the way, if I mispronounce any of these, I'm sorry. But Jaira featuring Chandler Moore and Naomi Rain by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. And number one this week, we have Wait On You featuring Dante Brown and Chandler Moore by Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. And now we'll go to the organization for the week. All right. And with that, let's now go to your organization of the week. And this week's organization is Anthem of Hope. So Anthem of Hope, they are a Christian health mental health organization dedicated to amplifying hope for those battling brokenness, depression, anxiety, self-harm, addiction, and suicide. They do very important work as this is an often misunderstood or even ignored arena in the lives of many Christians. This is one that I am personally passionate about. As many of you know, I do struggle with depression and anxiety and other issues, and we do feel very grateful to those in the church who continue to bring awareness to this topic. We would like you to consider volunteering or making a donation today. And if you have an organization that you're passionate about that you would like to see featured on MTalk News, please just leave us a comment down below. And with that, this brings this week's segment of MTalk News to a close. We hope you guys have enjoyed. We hope you've learned something. And we do ask that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join us every Saturday for more MTalk News and throughout the week for other content. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with us. Have a great day and God bless you. See you.